Hi friends, I'm Sean, host of the Stories That Empower podcast. I'm so glad you're here. If you're struggling right now, I want you to know there's hope and light for you. Every week I interview someone just like you, who's overcome a challenge, loss, setback, or trauma. I can't wait to share the nuggets of life wisdom that are embedded in their life stories. Please know this, you are not alone, you are loved. If you've been enjoying this podcast, please consider making a donation to help offset the production cost at storiesthatempower.com. I've got a great guest for you today, so let's get started. Hi, friends. Gene Walters and I are back to bring you another great episode of Unlocking Your Brilliance. And uh, as you guys know, this, this episode, you know, is a little more fluid than the weekly Monday podcast episodes that come out, you know, that are very structured. This is just two people having a pleasant conversation and that Gene and I hope that you guys find value in uh, in the content. So Gene, it's so great to have you back here again today. I so totally enjoy it, Sean. It's like talking to a friend and, you know, getting into the subjects that we both like and really helping people to open up to their brilliance. And of course, that's what we're here to do. Yeah. So Gene, we haven't uh we haven't chatted in a long time. And I think that's all because of me and my availability. Let's start off with what have you been up to recently? What um what's been new, what's been exciting yeah. in your life? What are you looking forward to? Yeah. I I don't have any actual plans moving forward other than to get myself organized. I keep telling myself that. But every week I because I moved my office and everything I, to home, I cart off files and boxes of things and it's amazing how much stuff I can get rid of. It's you know, when my kids come over, I open the freezer and go, "Here, take this, take take that." <laughs> And so I've started a, a, a different eating plan. I've started, you know, getting a, my office in order. And so I've just been really kind of catching up with myself. Eventually, I want to start traveling again. I think that would be really fun. And uh, but right, you know, I'm sort of like in the middle of things. And I think this is true with a lot of people right now, because I notice it with my clients. There's such a transition going on with everybody. Have you noticed that? I have, yeah. Um, tell tell me what uh, what what's been your observation? Well, if people are either, I just like yesterday there was a gal that realized she had to, due to some health concerns, she has to like get her house in order and sell it and move to California to be with her daughter. And then before that, there was somebody that was going through a divorce and trying to figure out her life and she was going through a grieving process. And I think I think it really I was noticing that sort of thing going on over and over in lots of different ways, whether it's a job change or a move or or just something going on within the person that says it's now time to make some change in your life. And so uh, I see a lot of grieving and I think people aren't we aren't not set up for grieving in our world. And I don't know if it's the U.S., because I think there are other countries that are probably much more sensitive to that kind of a process as grieving. But uh, I would like to people to understand that when we go through major changes, there's a grieving process that goes on and we need to honor that. You know, I've gone through it myself and, you know, like what's wrong with me? I need to be up and ready. And, and it, you're not in a place to do that. So anyway, that might be something to draw people's attention to that, we, when we go through major change, we're leaving something behind. And oftentimes people look at that and they're not looking at what's ahead. And, and and it's not so much that we always have to be looking ahead, but we have to honor the past as a way of preparing ourselves for where we're heading next. Because in a way we've earned it. You know, we've earned that next step. But I don't know that people understand that or appreciate that. Um, two things. One is yeah, it's yeah. it's fascinating. I mean, 
I've always considered you a very um, spiritually connected, spiritually rooted person, you know, with lots of insight. Mm. And you will, listeners, you will think that actually, you know, Gene and I coordinated this before the interview, but actually not. It's so funny. It's so interesting. You're talking about grieving and major changes because that's exactly what I was going to suggest we talk about today. <laughs> Um, and uh, specifically about deep, meaningful um, relationships yes. and the change, the change of those, right? Um, so it's first of all that that's just fascinating to me. That's one. Second of all, um, Jean, when you mentioned, you know, we need to honor those. Can you mm -hmm. elaborate on that, please? Yes. Um, well, we'll just take the. Yeah, the lady, well, both of the ones I just mentioned, the, the lady that's going through a divorce, she's been married for many years, uh, I think 25 maybe or something like that. And, you know, a lot of things have happened. People grow in different ways. And and so when, when there's a realization that this is complete, I don't think it comes to their mind like this is complete. I think it's more like I failed at this, you know, and I, and I think if we turned ourselves around a little bit and go, you know, life is just a compilation of experiences and, and it's not like we sign a contract that goes, okay, we're going to stay in this, ex this exact experience forever. Those experiences give us certain insight and, and, and sort of, you know, instigate growth and maybe learn to look at things from different angles. And so there's a lot of things that happen within the person that help them while they're in an experience. And then and then that might be finished because after you, it's what with the kid, for instance, we don't say like you have to stay in elementary school forever. We have them prepared that it's time now to go to middle school or it's time to go to high school, it's time to go to college. And so we take it for granted that they're like, okay, they completed this experience. Now it's time to go into the next experience. But as adults, I don't think we do that. And so we, you know, we can look back and go, I learned this. This is what happened. This is how I've changed. These are the things that I've learned. And then, and then realize that that's a gift that we've given ourselves. And then we can look on like, what's, what's the next step? And maybe we don't know the next step. Maybe we have to sort of grunt around a little bit and make experiment a bit to find it. But that's okay too, because we're very creative beings and we have the ability to do that. So uh, when you said that maybe we were more coordinated than you thought, I the thing I asked for is, is God, spirit, you're in charge today. I'm not, it's yours tell me what you want. I'm ready. <laughs> and that's kind of a thing I do every day because I want to be able to flow with spirit in, in whatever way it wants to take me because I know it's right. And I know that that's where I, in, in my human ego self wants to go like, but I want this to happen today, you know, and we all do that. And then, and then we really get in the way of our growth and our progression. So I think grieving is really about honoring the, the, all the things that we've done and learned and been, and then and honoring the fact that we're growing and, and it's time to take the next step too. And does that answer your question? <laughs> it does, it does, it does. And, you know, I, I'm just thinking out loud, um, taking what you said and just extending it for my own benefit. I think mm. what I'm hearing you say basically is, um, especially when it comes to grief, you know, you're right. I mean, I do think sometimes it's, it's cultural or it's regional, mm -hmm. you know, how we, how society expects us to behave. And, but I think what I'm hearing you say is that when we experience grief, especially a significant grief, you know, we should probably take the time to slow down and mm -hmm. uh, be with it, sit with it yes. and not rush through it. Yes. Um. I maybe it's a famous phrase. I don't know. I've just this comes to mind. It's like you either pay now or you pay later. Um, <laughs> yeah. And uh, that's a good one. It's probably healthier to deal with grief 
like at the time, because mm -hmm. I guess if we defer it, if we hide it or mask it or suppress it, it just makes, first of all, it makes, I would think it probably makes it that much harder to excavate and then to process it later because it's kind of yeah. unrelated as well. What are your thoughts about it that? It also could make you sick, Sean. Really? It can make you sick. If you're suppressing those heavy emotions and, and you're not honoring them, you're not giving yourself the time to really process it, your body is, you know, you're flowing all the time. Energy is flowing in and, and we're expressing it out. And if, if we block it, then we're blocking something in our body as well. So, so, I mean, we're not really, as a culture, we're not good at this, but I think, I do think it really helps to talk to someone who has no judgment, who can listen, who can honor where you are and isn't, pushing you to be something else, get over it, you know, crying is silly, you know, you, I, I think crying is one of the most cathartic things we could do. Because we're, when we cry, we're letting go of, I, th I say we're all letting go of the glue that's holding us in that place, you know, and then, and we know when the tears are finished. So, but and I'm not saying everybody has to cry because there's lots of different ways to grieve. So, but I do think one thing that's important is to learn how to get into your sensual part, meaning to be able to walk outside and smell the air and and connect with nature and look for the beauty and begin to just feel it and sense it and taste it and touch it. I mean, that brings us into a whole different level of experience. And then, you know, if someone has gone on, you know, we've lost a, a relative or a great friend or something. I think the greatest honoring is just to appreciate the time we had with them, you know, but to not go like, I wanted you to stay. And, you know, because that's so selfish, but we have to honor their time and what their timeline is. And I don't think we, we're good at that, <laughs> especially in the U.S. I don't know. I haven't really delved into it. I know in, in Mexico they have, um, and Halloween time, they have tables out for all their distant relatives and so forth, you know. Um, but anyway, that, I just think that I, that seems to be a theme right now that I'm noticing that, you know, people are changing and change is good. And I hear this a lot, but I don't like change and I don't want to change. Like that's the ego <laughs> and it will try to block us. So we have to be attentive to that. And, you know, Jean, the touch point that I was going to share with you, which I'll share with you now, when you kicked off uh, the conversation is, so what I was going to ask you is with regards to, with regards to deep, meaningful uh, relationships that we have, that mm -hmm. we all have. Um, my question is this. So as, you know, as those people move out of our lives because mm -hmm. of whatever reason, right? Change. They're finished. Yeah. Right. It's complete. <laughs> yeah. How, how do we continue to have those deep, meaningful relationships? So as we experience a void, a gap, what are your thoughts? I mean, how can we have those again? With with another person or with that same person? With okay. new with new people. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think it's wonderful to to have new relationships. I think it's something that we want to do all through life because you know, you're not hanging out with your elementary school friends, and you're probably not hanging out with your high school friends, or maybe there might be one or two, but but basically as you as you move on in your work and in your life you keep making new friends so i think that's because who you are changes and you're mirroring that in the people that you show up in your life so i think it's to me it's honoring the past when we let go and you know we can actually acknowledge and finish with that. It doesn't mean you're bad. It doesn't mean I don't like you anymore. It doesn't mean you're a bad person. It just means for where I am right now in my life, there's a shift that I need to honor and move on to the next group, you know, for friend, whatever, social situation. And so um, 
but I but would you agree that that in a way that's really honoring it? You, when you try to hold on, I hear people say, "This is my friend from from preschool," and I'm just in awe. <laughs> Like, does that mean that you've grown together all the way through all these years? Or does that mean you're hanging on to something that's been finished a long time? I don't know what that means. But uh, I, I think we need to look with eyes to say, it's okay to change. It's okay to move on. Also, just to add another dimension to this, I was meditating one time. And uh, this fellow came to me in meditation, and he was someone who had passed on. And he, and I, I, I had his voice. I saw him. It was him. And he said to me, he gave me a message. And he said to me that, anyway, the things he said to me, I knew I had to pass on to his wife. Now, I'm not thrilled about this because I'm thinking, I this is not exactly the kind of work I want to do. <laughs> But I, but she was a friend too, so I called her and gave her this message, and it completely changed her life because I didn't know what the relationship was about when he left the earth, when his body dropped, when his soul went on, and um, and I found out later that because he what he he suffered so long, she decided to be mad at God, which people tend to do. If it didn't work out the way they thought it should, then they're mad at God. You know, whatever. Okay. So when he's told her, when the message was that he waited too long, he wanted to be there with her and he's sorry. And I gave that to her and it completely changed her life because then she understood that Rick was the one that was holding on. And even though he was in a lot of pain, you know, he he sort of inflicted it upon himself because he wanted to stay when it was time to go. And so that happened. And and she was she I told her, you know, I got this information, but you can get it, too, because he hasn't left this earth. He's available. And so they they actually converse <laughs> And not, you know, I don't know that it's a constant thing or anything, but they actually have conversations and, you know, he hasn't left. He just dropped the body. I thought that was so interesting because one, that's not really what the work I want to do, but two, it was such a healing for her and such a gift that I couldn't denounce it. I mean, it was, it was kind of a beautiful thing. So anyway, that kind of goes beyond the boundaries of what we're talking about, but but I want you to know that the the people we love are still available. I mean, it may not be we sit down and play cards with them, or you know, or go have a drink or whatever. But the love is there, the connection's there. It's all there. It hasn't gone away. So go wh beyond what you wanted. <laughs> no, this is this is perfect. You know, this is all. There's no in, there's no out. It's all it's all good stuff. Yeah. <laughs> this is just a vehicle, right? This this body is a vehicle and and it wears out just like your car. I mean, at some point you're going to get a different car and you don't mourn your old car. Usually, you know, <laughs> sometimes I do. But <laughs> and uh, you know, but we honor the fact that you know, this car served us very well. And uh, now it's time for me to Go to the next one. <laughs> yeah, what I'm what I'm hearing you say is that, you know, with regards to the deep, meaningful relationships, is that when one comes to an end, mm -hmm. um before before you know we rush out and seek new ones, although that's an option that's available to mm -hmm. all of us, maybe, you know, maybe just taking some time to let go and to honor it. Yeah. And, uh, you know, because that's a phase. And yeah. then the next phase may be like for us to be open and trusting and then new, you know, a new one will most likely yeah. come into our lives. Well, you have, have to also see the changes in yourself, because mm -hmm. maybe five years ago, this kind of relationship would have been just fine. And then in these five years, change you've changed you've learned some things you've grown in some way um you've understood some things and then and so you're kind of conditioned for maybe a different kind of relationship next so 
we I just think we have to be a little bit more introspective about these things and uh, honor the fact that we are going through change. Everyone is right now. Everyone. The world is changing. And we, we, we have to know that and not preach around like, but I want it to be this way. And we all have that little stubborn streak, you know. <laughs> you know, so one thing that we've talked about that you've shared a couple of times, uh, the word change. Mm -hmm. Let's take the conversation slightly in that direction. In your opinion, um, you know, how can we adapt to change? Like what's been helpful for you? Yes. Well, certainly, I mean, I'm a very introspective person. So I meditate every day and that helps me tremendously. Having a connection with spirit is very important, but most people probably are not going to take the time to do that. But I suggest though that they find a way to connect with something beyond their own small self their own egoic self and and whether it's it's nature or art or something like that i i would really encourage them to spend some time to just be quiet i see this a lot with people who go through divorces they're like okay i'm gonna go find somebody else now and it's like oh please take your time please 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 take your time <laughs> because i i just don't feel like just grabbing onto the next person is is going to help them because they need time to assess. And, it, and also it affects your body. I mean, people don't understand this, but it really affects your body if you don't give yourself that time. So I think it's, I think just spending some time either in counseling is good um, or being alone for a while. I know that's a scary word for a lot of people being alone, but I think if you cultivate that, it, it can be just so dynamic for your awareness and for your health too. So, um, but just whatever way you need to, to take some time and even even make some notes to yourself. What, what happened during this relationship or during this last job and how have I changed since then? And that, that might help you kind of get clearer about what that process was all about. Because it's all a process. We're in process all the time. You know, you it's mentioned it's not just a dead experience. Like I'm going to go work at this company for ten years, and that's that, and then I'm going to go find another job. It's not like that. There's so much more depth than that. One uh, one word that you mentioned, you know, introvert. Uh, I mm -hmm. I also consider myself an introvert, <laughs> and just like you, you know, uh, like to allocate time for reflection and reflection, meditation, spending time in nature. My question is, um, you know, you, so you have, I know you have clients, you have coaching clients and mm -hmm. you're plugged in and you, you're a seasoned author and you have, I think you have your finger on the pulse as far as your observation as our society, our community, you know, you mentioned grieving in your opinion, like what can we as a community do to be of assistance to one another during this time okay i think the first thing is to learn how to listen um when people don't go through these processes and flow with them and learn how to be introspective to a, a bit at least um they act out you know so if they've been through a painful experience and they don't give themselves time to work with it uh, and really put it in order, you know, put it in perspective, they act out, you know, you see it with children a lot, because they don't know how to hold back. So they'll be in a bad mood, or scream, or shout, or punch somebody, or whatever, and we go, that's bad behavior, but we don't know, well, why is, why is that person doing that? And I think as adults, we do it in another way, but those are all signs that we haven't worked through something, and uh, and so to listen and to offer ourselves as a as a true friend, and that means no judgment. I'm just listening. You know, I'm willing to hold your hand right now. And um, and I think that's a hu huge that's a humongous gift. So that would be one way. But but to really integrate some of that into our culture, 
to where we do understand transition, we do understand grieving, and we do understand that we can be present for someone else. I think that's a huge gift. And if you, I mean, I ask my, my uh, when I do a communication class, I ask the students, how many people do you have in your life that really know how to listen? It's always under five. Sometimes it's no one. And sometimes I have one person. And I think that's amazing. <laughs> you know, I think one thing that we've talked about, one thing that we've talked about a couple of times today and on a previous episodes as well is transition shift changes um let's talk about let's take the conversation and reflect it on you a little what what's currently going on with you and is there any project that you're currently working on that you're focused on or investing time and energy what's happening with you these days well one thing that i'm getting prepared for <laughs> Because I, I have to have order in my life before I get enter into a big project. Um, and that's that's where I am right now is just getting order. But um, is Earth School. <laughs> I want to write a book on Earth School. Um, and and one of my the, one of my clients has asked me some incredible questions. And, and it came what she did was tell me, where she was with these questions in her life. But also I said to her, you know, those questions are wonderful. And I think you're, you're mirroring a lot of people when you ask those questions. But one of the questions was, are we being punished by being in the earth? Which told me a lot about her, that she felt very punished or she felt like she was living a pretty miserable life. But I thought, well, I wonder if there's a lot of people who feel that way. And then so I, I, I took all of her questions and I thought these would make great chapters in a book. But also from there, because I decided I'm going to write this book, I'm right now I'm just collecting notes. And so one of the things that happens when I meditate is I channel. And uh, if I have my mind on Earth School, then I start writing stuff and it pertains to Earth School. <laughs> So what I want to do with this book eventually, as, I, as it begins to take form, is to help people understand why we're hanging out in the earth, why it's a blessing, and what's the best way to deal with it. So um, I'll have a lot of exercises and um, insight in the book on just different ways to look at life so that we can really make the most of it and enjoy it. You know, it's I think we're here to have fun. I don't think this is supposed to be a dreary experience, you know. And I don't know that we hear that very much, you know, because people talk about how they suffered. But I want to, I want to help them look at it from another point of view, and understand that it's a blessing to be in Earth School. And if we're going to hang out in school, we might as well learn a couple things, you know. So that's sort of like <laughs> that's on the back burner. You know, and it, it just keeps, it keeps, it creeps forward. Pieces of it start to keep over. So I have the file that I put together. And when I'm, when I've got everything the way I want it in my office so that I can actually function with a clear mind, uh, I'll start putting that together. That's, that's the project that I have back there. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm always, it's always so neat to talk to you for so many reasons. When one of the reasons is like you, you take things very lightly. You don't take yeah. things very seriously, unless, of course, they're serious things. But yeah. I always I, pay I, my bills. <laughs> 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 when my computer's running. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. <laughs> but I, I think you you definitely have a unique gift of, of finding the the lightness, you know, of mm -hmm. life and the humor in things. And um and you not just for yourself, but like you like to impart that thought, yeah. you know, that feeling with with everybody. So that's always been very neat, every conversation I have with you. Yeah. Um and it's also neat how you've taken you've you've taken information or feedback from an individual and perhaps others into 
you know, like a draft content for your mm -hmm. new book. Um, so I, I just think that's pretty cool. It's fun. You know what? It's really fun. I am, I am, I'm always looking for fun. I like, there's so many things that I think we can have fun with. We can go to the grocery store and let it be an adventure. You know, we can kind of peruse the grocery store and find new things that we, oh, wow, this is interesting, you know, and give it a go, you know. And and so if we do that, it's like the playful child that's in you. We don't let it go away. We, we keep it. And I think it keeps you young. I think it keeps you vibrant. I think it keeps you in a in a different state of mind. But we all have that. But somehow or other, we many people frown on it. Well, you're just like a big kid. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I am. <laughs> I like playing. Yes. And it's you're not serious enough. No. But sometimes people will tell me these most dire things, and I start laughing. And, you know, and they understand that I'm not laughing at them. I'm seeing another whole side to this. But then after we talk a little bit, they start laughing because they think they realize how they've made such a humongous deal out of this, you know, when it really isn't, you know, <laughs> it doesn't have to be that. So my car is an example, like my car is in the shop right now. And first of all, I thought it'd be back in two days. That was about 10 days ago. <laughs> I talked to the gal this morning and she said, well, we're going to try to have it done today. And I'm carrying a hearing like is probably not likely. And then I thought, I don't care. <laughs> I've got this other little car I'm running around in and it's fine. And, you know, I'll get my car back when I get my car back. And I think that many times we try to control that, you know, like I want it back now, you know. And it's, you know, well, there's a reason why it's not ready. So, okay. <laughs> and then I do think we have to laugh more. I think so many things are laughable. And, you know, and when we harm ourselves, we harm ourselves by not laughing. <laughs> so that's the whole picture, I think, you know. <laughs> You're, you're you're like shaking your head. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no, I I think it's a, I think, I think it's a gift. But I also think I think what I've learned from you is that, just like all the other your all your other perspectives, it's like a practice. Is yes. would you say it's a practice? Yes, absolutely. It's absolutely it's a choice. It's a practice. Um, it's something that you develop, but it's also something that you you work on, you know, because it's like the Dalai Lama said to his monks, he's because I was watching this one day, he said, you must look at everything from every possible perspective. And I thought that was so brilliant, because if we do that, if we get off of our poor me thing and begin to look at what's the gift here, what's the advantage here, why is this happening? Instead of looking at it like a big punishment, looking at it as a possibility, then we begin to be able to operate from a whole different level. And I think many people like, woe is me. I mean, if you say, how are you doing? Like, woe is me. And, and I think I'm here to go, well, let's look at that differently. Let's see if we can find another way to deal with that. And, uh, and like yesterday, there was the gal that was moving to California. She's been resisting that for a long time. And now she said, I'm going to do it. And I was thinking, yay, because I think it's going to, what I see, I th see her entering into a whole new world of possibility, you know, like all the things that she wants are no longer here in St. Louis, but I, I believe they're in California. Um, so anyway, we'll see, but, but I'm going to continue to encourage that because my vision is such that I can see that. Where is she's not quite fully there? Maybe I can help in that regard, and that's what I do with a lot of people. I help them see with different eyes, and yeah, that's that's one of that's a gift. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, yeah. And and it never ceases to amaze me how you have like an infinite supply of like love and. Yeah. The passion like to give out not that never ceases to amaze me but also how 
you yourself, you know, fill your own cup. And probably I would think like through the extensive meditation and mindfulness mm -hmm. that you do. Yeah. But I read, I, I'm, I'm such a reader. I read everything mm -hmm. and, uh, and I'm always like, Oh, here, here's an interesting thought. So I've been think I've been reading a lot about the power of decision, the power of intention. And one of the things that this author mentioned, he's a very brilliant fellow. Um, he said that when God said, let there be light, he didn't say, well, maybe we should have light. Or I think it's a good idea if we had light or I'm considering having light. He said, let there be light. He was unequivocal. He was definite. He didn't mince around. And I think that there's so much value in saying, I choose to have a happy life. I choose it. You know, I decree it. I, I affirm it. You know, it not maybe I'm going to try. I, people tell me, I'm going to, well, I'll try that. And I go, mm -hmm. <laughs> let's try that. again. let's go back to that, you know, because when we're trying, we're not doing anything. But when we decide, when we decide there's power there. And when we decide then all the options open up and all the ways begin to be known so I think it's really important that people understand choice and, and, you know, decisions and intention. And, and then if they do, then they can work through each obstacle. They can get, they can climb over, walk around, dig underneath. I mean, there's a way to get through it. Yeah, I, yeah, absolutely. And, and, you know, I, I hear decision and I also, does commitment come into play there as well? Yeah. Okay. Intention, commitment, Intention, uh, commitment. decision. It's yeah. all pretty much the same thing. Okay. I mean, you if you decide, then you've decided, then your commitment is there and you keep going. Like this whole this whole last two, three weeks has been internet, computer stuff, you know. And I just make the next call, make the next call, <laughs> you know, make the next call, you know. I mean, I, I there's one thing I am Sean is determined. I mean, I will climb over every rock and <laughs> I might get bruised in the process, but I will climb over every rock. You know? <laughs> and I really think successful people are like that, mm -hmm. you know, that, oh, you're going to throw that in my way. Well, guess what? I'm going to blow it up. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think, I think it's great. I mean, it's refreshing. You have a vision, you know, you're, you're committed and you know, you don't want to let it go, not for yourself and not for your clients. So, yeah. yeah. They, they get the fringe benefits of it, you know, but it's it's really, I have to tell you, it's really for me. I want, it's the way I want to live my life. I, I want to have that connection and I choose it. And so whatever it takes to have it is what I'm going to do. You know, if it means, it, as things come up along the way, I, I just question you know my thing is this is advances is this part of the deal if it is great no problem i'll do it yeah <laughs> that includes you and i talking too by the way <laughs> <laughs> because i feel like a lot of the things that you bring up are what other people bring up mm -hmm. and so we're really in my world anyway we're helping a lot of people mm -hmm. Because I don't, because I don't think the way other people do. Sometimes it's it's beyond me how they're thinking. So then, to be able to reach them, I have to have that. You know, those questions are. I have to have that so that I can address it. Yeah. Yeah. Jean, I wish we would have another, at least two <laughs> hours, two to four hours to to keep chatting. I want to be mindful of your time. And so um, before we before we wrap up, I'm going to summarize just a portion of the nuggets of wisdom That's that you so shared cool. with us. <laughs> so cool. So here we go. For us to flow with spirit, to honor the past, that grieving is about honoring, to cry and let go of the glue. Um, for us to get into our sensual look 
to look for the beauty, to connect with spirit, to learn how to listen with no judgment, to be present for someone else, to keep the, and this is probably one of my favorite, you know, mm -hmm. themes that I hear in our, you and I, our conversations, to keep the playful child within us, to ask what's the gift here and that there's power in decision. We want to stay connected with Eugene because we want to check out all of your books, including your to-be-published book called Earth School, which will <laughs> come out one day whenever you are ready. Sure. Uh, yeah, so please uh, tell us how we can do that before we say goodbye. Well, I would like people to check out my website. It's spiritualtransformation.com. And they, they're all the information about all the books are there and any way they, they want to try to reach me, they, they can do it. All the phone numbers and everything are on there. So, uh, Jean, and my address is my email is Jean at spiritual transformation, but, uh, definitely go to my website, spiritual And one more thing, uh, and that is when I said, stay connected to spirit, you have to feel spirit. It, you can't get it from your head. You have to go to your heart. So you, the way we connect with spirit is to feel spirit. So we get better and better and better at that when we practice it. Last little tidbit. <laughs> Add to your list. <laughs> I appreciate you squeezing that in last minute. <laughs> Um, Jean, it was it was so awesome talking to you again. I mean, this is this is one of the highlights for me. You and I just feel so much at at peace um, when I speak with you, and just content and grounded. I don't know how you do it; it almost feels magical. But I'm just so grateful for your time and these conversations. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for allowing me. I am so grateful. Of course, of course. <laughs> Until next time, listeners, we hope we, Gene and I hope that you enjoyed this Unlocking Your Brilliance series. And totally. until next time, we will see you guys soon. Bye, Gene. Bye. Bye, Sean. Bye -bye. Have a good one. <laughs> you too. <laughs>